For our final presentation today, we have David Duncan, who will be talking about building an image pipeline. Thank you again, David, and thank you all for staying with us throughout two days of content. Thanks, Rich. Really appreciate it. And I'm super excited to see so many people uh, uh, back again to hear me talk a second day. So uh, thanks for being here. Really appreciate that. Um, I'm David Duncan. I'm a partner solutions architect. Uh, I work at Amazon Web Services, and uh, I spend a lot of time uh, working in and around the uh, community that uh, in the greater Red Hat community, and uh, that includes uh, work on CentOS and Fedora um, over over the years. So, uh, I'm going to talk to us to to uh, talk or discuss a little bit about uh, some of the things that I like to do with. Um, uh, Composer, um, one of the image build process, uh, um, applications that is available and used in both Fedora and uh, to a lesser degree, I think in CentOS but today, but um, I'm sure we'll be uh, getting a more prominent place in the, in the future. Um, but the OS build uh, or Composer or Lower Axe, uh, as, as some people know it, um, over the, it's changed names over the years um, is a way of of, of uh, building images, and we're going to talk about that uh, in this talk. Um, I'm going to talk about using it for building on Amazon uh, on EC2, and uh, some of the things that I think I'm going to highlight. Some of the things that I think about are, are amazing about using the blueprints, um, and. Uh, how I use that in turn uh, with Jenkins to uh, to create builds that are necessary, and uh, and then some of the things we can do, uh, or some of the things that I think we should be doing uh, to extend uh, use and uh, the ability for others to quickly adopt um, the uh, the work that the efforts that everyone is putting into uh, the distribution and the, and the and the you know the greater um, uh, ecosystem of the the Linux community, and then I'm going to talk just a very just touch on uh, transitional or ways of making uh, updates available in a very uh, consistent way on Amazon, uh, so that we can move through that. So, um, first off, <clears throat> I, I do a lot of automation by sales scripts. I'm not um, I'm not a uh, uh, what I would consider to be a, uh, a hands-on, everyday engineer. I spend a lot of my time looking at how people are using systems and then put those put that into action and help other engineers put that into action in ways that is uh, helpful. And so I spend a lot of time figuring out how I'm going to rehome those shell scripts and determine what it is that I, I need to do to make them simpler and <clears throat> stage well. Um, and in building images, I found that it's just not enough. You, you have to have some way to really cohesively um, test and verify that you have what you need, <clears throat> and then to share that with others who can also um, spend some time uh, really taking taking the you know the effort to go and see what it is that is a part of that uh, integration and see if those steps are working for them. So <clears throat> um, on Amazon, uh, on, on you know, in any environment, you always want to start with any virtual machine environment. You, you want to start with something that is a golden image. And uh, that golden image is a place for a lot of people. It's a jumping off point. It's somewhere where they go to to identify that, you know, like, here is what I'm going to use that's stable and consistent and always gives me um, gives me what I'm looking for. Um, but for others, it's a goal. Uh, so there are different ways of, of um, building an image and, and having a, that, in, that virtual machine available for, um, for users. And I think, you know, as, as a provider, you want to provide uh, something that is consumable Either you know to whatever kind of customer you have, uh, you know wh whoever's using your your uh, work product, and I think that that you know that uh, that the OS build process has been uh, something that has made it easy for me. Now 
I'm a little bit behind. I'm probably working more like um, like I would have done with the old welder composer, but um, but I'm you know, but I feel like uh, it's really taking off in uh, in some pretty amazing direction directions. So OS Build um, as a tool allows me to leverage the same thing I would have used from uh, you know from on premises. So I can use a Kickstart file. I can do everything that I need to do in that in the you know in the Kickstart file, but then I can make customizations. And uh, the OS Build team calls that a blueprint, or and and the the blueprints, the configurations in the blueprints can come from a lot of different places. So my first experiences around building images was um, was when I was tasked with with looking at how we could build out. Um, um, a Microsoft SQL image that uh, customers could leverage, and that it would be easy for easy to deploy on on um, Red Hat. But then I started to realize that I had something that was pretty amazing in my hand. So um, just looking into this, there's a very easy way in the customizations to create local repositories and to, to associate um, uh, those local repositories with the the instance that you're building. Um, there is uh, there in the blueprint itself, you can make modifications to the kernel and, and something that uh, is an important part of modifications to, to uh, kernels on AWS is ensuring that you have uh, the right um, IO timeout. And um, that's integrated into the kickstart for CentOS today, but, um, but there was a point where it wasn't, and you know, if you were building an image, it was a nice thing to have as a as a kernel customization in your in your final build. Um, but there are lots of others, uh, and then this my favorite uh, is the remote the ability to leverage a remote Git repository as if it was an RPM itself, and and to provide yourself with um, the ability to make some modifications uh, and run that. Uh, or execute that um, uh, the code from that Git repository as if it was uh, uh, installed on the system uh, locally. So this was um, this was a huge help for me when I started to look around for what I wanted in uh, the configuration because what I wanted was what the community practice was using, and so this became a fantastic way for me to create a test bed. Um, for building out uh, for building out images. Um, so if you're looking, I just wanted to say, like, first off, if you're looking to build out on uh, uh, an understanding of this, start with the Otis build because uh, that is the um, that's where the the um, the development is being done today, right? So Welder IO has an older um, Manifest the blueprint that I was talking about. So it's a, sort of a, an artifact from that older um, CLI, um, still used, but um, but there are uh, efforts on the way to provide a much smoother interface. Um, for me, I, I, there is cock, cockpit support for uh, the composer itself, but that has never been a uh, part of my practice. I have not found a way to. Um, to create to to work with cockpit on uh, the public cloud instances. Um, so um, the Git repository integration is something I just I keep wanting to stress, and adding those local repositories makes it possible for you to um, to install the. Uh, non-standard packages. So for me, that ends up being things like uh, RPMs that are associated with CloudWatch events, or things that uh, leverage or are utilities for um, for building in uh, CloudFormation template uh, support into the original image for uh, deployment. A lot of the things. This is kind of similar, uh, I think, in 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 character to what. Um, uh, Davida was talking about earlier in the hyperscaler SIG is that uh, what what he had, uh, what he put together was um, 
uh, you know, or what the hyperscaler SIG was was specifically looking at was packages that wouldn't really be appropriate for everywhere, but would be very helpful for, um, a, a, you know, within a specific domain. And I have with the OS tree support. I'd be very interested to, uh, if someone else has has been has leveraged that, and if we can, you know, if they would be interested in talking to me about it. Uh, that's something that I haven't done yet. So um, there, so I uh, with Rel eight came the Linux system role, and I I got really excited about uh, how the Linux system roles were were being uh, developed. And I was super excited when I found out that there were some people who were working on uh, an image builder uh, implementation because this could I could integrate this the image builder uh, build into uh, a process that I could leverage straight straight from uh, a Jenkins pipeline. So now um, so now I have an installer that installs the image builder uh, system role onto uh, instances and then those instances create the images that for the different uh, the different versions that I want to um, to build for um, and this is I it's showing that it's you know that it's um, it's been seven months since its last update but uh, this is still pulling in um, uh, current code and it's uh, making a managed deployment possible. Um, so then that's, you know, using that Ansible, uh, that, uh, system role, the, the Linux system role, I can, um, I can leverage that. And, and this is just a little peek into blue ocean for how a deployment works. Um, but the, but I can work that into my image builder configuration. Um, and then I can do some other things like, um, installing or ensuring that I have sufficient volume space for, uh, for the for the configuration, making sure that I'm using an image type or an instance type that has uh, that uh, can support uh, virtualization, and and go ahead and uh, and deploy that for the duration of the build, save the artifact, and then uh, and then destroy the instance. So my basic computing time is only the time it takes me to. Um, to set up the configuration and deploy the build. Um, so I'm doing this uh, for for each one of the uh, of the um, the application, or I'm sorry, each one of the operating system distributions. And uh, you know, I I'm seeing this, and I'm thinking to myself. It'd be super excited if we had a test framework or if we were building out some things that looked a lot more like uh, not just packages. Um, and if we had uh, if we had sort of a, a direction that said um, we want to build out solutions that are uh, specific to uh, workflows. And I've seen this a lot where where you have even a large company where they they want to they look at they look at what's going on and they say, we we'd like to do this, but we'd like to do it in a way that's super simplified, and we'd like to have you know we'd like to have a process that we don't have to um, rediscover. So I thought it'd be great to to start looking at a large number of packages, or like large number of of package deployments or specific applications that were deployed or open source solutions, um, and just to see how we could how we could put that together. So that's I mean. Effectively, this is, you know, I'm talking about a spin, but maybe a spin that looks something more like uh, not necessarily a commercial application. And I'll show you some commercial applications in a second, but but maybe just like an end-to-end, um, uh, well-rounded um, configuration. So similar to the way that Fedora does uh, like the neuro spin or, uh, you know, having more specific HPC spins would be something that would be a lot more fun. So I want just, I wanted solutions, not just images. And I think that, you know, OS build starts off as looking like it's just going to build you an operating system. But then once you start to get into all of the component parts that um, are in the, in the image builder tools, you start to see that actually there's a lot more to it than that. You can, 
you can really uh, create a lot more uh, configuration. So AWS has this simple sort of this simplified way of handling virtual machines that I think is um, is really impressive. You know, and it comes out of this sort of the Bitnami school. Um, but I think that there's a lot to be said for being able to do this as a community, not necessarily as uh, you know, as a as an entity, or uh, and and to say that you know these are these are ways that we are using and presenting open source software uh, to the community that you know that provides it on top of uh, the experience that we are creating for a stable business. And so I'd love to see some more um, some more development around these purpose-built solutions and purpose-built solutions done in the context of the blueprints for OS build. So um, building the cloud, the cloud, and so I wanted to say a little bit of, or sort of roll through what it looks like. Um, from the perspective of, of building out those those um, machine images on on Amazon, if you're so when you build a uh, or when a CentOS image is built, there's an upload process um, from either from OS Build today as of as of the t release 26, they they support the providers. And the uh, and the upload is work is supposed to be functional. I haven't tested it yet. But <clears throat> uh, in using OS Build, I think most people think of it as something you do on your local machine, and you uh, upload that to an S3 bucket, and then convert that to a snapshot. Um, and then you, as a user, uh, you define an instance manifest, and uh, what. Amazon calls an, an AMI, the, the machine image, the Amazon machine image. That Amazon machine image is uh, the combination of the, the instant snapshot that's registered um, with, uh, for the image and the instance manifest that you as a user define. Um, and uh, one of the last actions that I take with instances that uh, are built in this kind of in this manner is to is to uh, deliver them to the AWS marketplace. So using the same process as uh, as Brian uses, we're uh, funneling those in, pushing the latest updates, and then pushing that to marketplace. Um, but I'm not doing it uh, outside of, of Amazon. I'm actually uh, bringing it in on onto the uh, um, onto an instance, like a, a large scale instance, an M5 metal or a C5 metal, uh, depending on what I'm building, and and then uh, looking at how I can uh, build out these solutions. Um, and I want to see this happen. I mean, I'd love to see this happen in the context of the of the community, like you know that we're up that we're finding ways to um, uh, to communicate these uh, solutions and pushing those solutions into OS builds so that it can uh, so that we can take on um, a uh, functional um, responsibility for. Um, uh, for just solutions, right? I mean, uh, things that people can add, can like add their own uh, basic modifications to, and and get uh, a, an image from which they can launch many or one experience, however they decide is easy or is fits their uh, requirements. Um, <clears throat> and uh, and. But so, like, this is so simple that it can happen in a very contained way. It doesn't have to happen outside of, you know, outside. Of, doesn't you don't have to start with some image that came from somewhere on on some metal. You you can do this all within the the context of the environment of the cloud environments. And I think you can do this on really any any cloud today. 
And finally, I wanted to talk about, so obviously then you're left with something, you're left with an artifact. That artifact is this machine image and that machine image, uh, we have a way, we have a data type that uh, you can associate with the, um, the latest instance. And this is something I'd love to add uh, to the infrastructure if, if um, uh, we can talk about that later. But the, but the parameter store gives us the ability to uh, create a tag that um, that identifies publicly that we have an instance of CentOS that is the, the latest version. And if we decide to make a new version, we can assign the later uh, AMI created to that same tag. And then anybody who tries Tries launch from that latest ends up with the artifact from our most recent build. So if you have, uh, like I showed in the previous slide, uh, a timed build, let's say for um, for machine images with the configurations that you expect, then um, that can be replaced consistently. Um, as needed with with the latest updates. So um, one of the things that I think is uh, always a conversation uh, that I have with people is, well, I started an instance and then it took 20 minutes for the updates to run. And uh, we want to make, you know, we, want, we don't want that to happen. Uh, so then I start to explain a process that looks like this. I think it would be great to have a community process that brought us this same uh, kind of kind of structure that um, uh, that a customer you know or people who are using the, the this kind of platform um, or any cloud platform really I think like even OpenStack it, this is a this is kind of a common practice or common experience and I think that all the way through there's a lot of um, there's a lot of improvement to be done um, with this as a process. So I'm going to leave it there. I'm 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 uh, super excited about, like I said, about uh, the OS build and the OS build team and the work that they've done. And I just want to carry this off into um, an opportunity to make more um, uh, more simplified configuration so that we can lower the barrier barrier to entry to the community for um, more people, more developers, more new blood. So with that, I'll uh, take any questions you have. If anyone has any questions, please do speak up. Well, I would love to talk to anyone about it. And, and uh, uh, if you're- Oh, we have somebody that says they have a question. Oh, okay. I guess they are typing. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, I, you know, it's uh, so I, I mean, I can go on just a little bit because I thought this was a great tool. Um, and um, uh, a couple of, I think it was a couple of years ago, I was, I was, uh, when Steph Walters was still working on this and, and uh, he and I had a conversation around it uh, as the way, as a fun way to, um, <laughs> to really dig in and introduce people to customized, uh, customized systems. And I still think that it's a, it is a great tool. I would love to see, you know, help people to build their own machine learning instances, 
um, to do to do um, configurations that just other people wouldn't think about, but are really helpful, and to do that in a very simple way. So, um, I'm I'm kind of wondering. I'm hoping that there's there's going to continue there's going to be continued interest in this, and and we can talk more about solutions and bring some more solutions to the to the table. So the question from the audience is, can we build OS tree images? So as of uh, release 26, you can build OS tree images with, uh, with the OS build. Um, so the release, uh, that release had uh, several improvements. In, um, uh, and like I said, I haven't done it yet, but, um, but I know it's possible. The next question that we've got is, can we add our own custom configurations as well? Is it only VM-based, or can we create Podman images? Uh, it is uh, it's possible to create Podman is, it, images. There's a there is also a Docker configuration that's involved that's uh, that's provided. So there's a Docker file and and Docker config. So you can do both Podman and and Docker images, if that's if that's uh, um, uh, if if that's interesting to you, I am I am happy with Podman. <laughs> it appears that that's all the questions that we have. Well, and, there, uh, yeah, there was one that uh, I see. Earlier, you said there, we had a cloud cloud image sig, but it's been an, inactive for a, a long time. And if and um, uh, I know that those are those are built by the core team, uh, like Fabian says. But if there's if there's a place there, um, uh, if there's a place there where they think this is a this is an important you know part of the or this can be a handy part of the the build process. I would love to help get that get that integrated, and uh, love to sort of kickstart that that cloud image sig again uh, with the right people. Well, that would be great. And if yeah. you want to, if you want to uh, get with myself or any of the board members uh, in the coming days, we would be glad to to help you get that started up again. Yeah, let's do it. I'll I'll jump in. 